All right, these are the answers to our chemical names and formula writing quick check. So at the top there, we're writing the correct chemical formula. Now remember, when we're writing the correct formula, most of the times we need to find the ions and then put them together so that they get a net ionic charge of zero. So our first one, magnesium bromide. When I look to my friendly ion card, I will find magnesium is plus two and bromide is minus one. Again, I find this on my super friendly ion card, and you can see there that magnesium is a plus two ion, bromide is a minus one ion. That's where I found that information. And so again, to make sure that we have a net ionic charge of zero, I'm going to need one of my magnesium and two of my bromides. That's the crisscross that we've mentioned before. One of the magnesiums two of the bromides. So that's why it's a one to two ratio. Looking at the next one, this is a, a molecular compound. And when we have, see those prefixes, di, pent, or others, tri, tetra, hexa, we just write the compound formula based on those prefixes. So diphosphorus means that we have two phosphorus pent oxide, five oxygens. If you tried to look up their charges, phosphorus is a minus three. Oxide is minus two. And so you see, we don't put two negatives together. We always have to have a positive and a negative. So that should be another hint that you just need to use those prefixes in effort to write that proper formula. Next, we have iron 3 chloride. You don't even have to look the iron up because iron 3 means that it is plus 3. Chloride on your friendly ion card is right under bromide, so uh, right above, sorry. It is also a minus 1 ion. So I need one of the irons, three of the chlorines. Ammonium sulfate. Here we have two polyatomic ions, so you need to make sure that you have the correct formulas for the polyatomic ions. So looking at my polyatomic ion list, sulfate is right here, is a minus 2, SO4 minus 2, ammonium is NH4 plus 1. Now remember on the test, you're going to have to have these memorized, so you're going to have them in a max matching situation. So you'll have to consult that list on the test. So now here we have the ammonium sulfate. I need two of the ammoniums, so they need parentheses, and one of the sulfate. So it's NH4 in parentheses, two of them, and then one of the sulfates. Our last one, stannic fluoride. Stannic, oh, I'm sorry, we have calcium phosphate here. Calcium phosphate, calcium is plus two on our super friendly ion card, phosphate is a polyatomic ion, 8, PO4 minus 3. So that's why I need three of the calciums and two packages of phosphate. And now the last one, stannic fluoride. Stannic is a classical name for an ion. So again, we can find that on our super friendly ion card. Here I see stannic, which means it is SN plus 4, tin plus 4. And that's where I can find that. Fluoride, of course, is up at the top. Fluoride F minus 1. And so I will need one of my tins and four of the fluorides to make sure that I have a net ionic charge of zero. So now with the naming, remember that we can use our friend the flow chart. So we'll take a quick look at that. And remember that there's three main questions that we really need to know how to answer. So None of these are really going to be acids right now. We're going to have to know the acids in a matching situation. So the three main questions, are there two elements in the compound or more than two? And that'll tell you which way to go. Once you figure that out, you got to know the difference between a metal and a nonmetal, And then you've got to know the difference between an A and a B element. Remember that an A element will only form one type of ion. A B element will form more than two. And when you have a B element, 
that's when you're going to have to use Roman numerals or the classical name in the uh, compound name. And again, those are found on our super friendly ion card. The A elements are at the top, the B elements are in the middle, and then there are those couple extra A elements, silver, cadmium, and zinc, because they only form one kind of ion. So looking at the naming, first one, I'm sure you might even just know by memory now, sodium chloride. But here, there's only two elements. Sodium is a metal, and it's an A element, so I just name the ion sodium chloride. Same thing with aluminum sulfide. Aluminum and sulfur. It doesn't matter that there's two and three. Aluminum and sulfur is two elements. Aluminum's a metal. It's an A element, so it's aluminum sulfide. Here we have KNO3. We've got potassium, nitrogen, and oxygen. That's three elements. And when you go that way on your flowchart, there is a polyatomic ion here. You have to recognize NO3 as nitrate. Potassium is an A element, so I just have to name the ions potassium nitrate. Now the next one with nitrogen, nitrogen is a non-metal. There's two elements here. Nitrogen is a non-metal. This is the only time we get to use those prefixes. That's how we get to the lower left corner of our flowchart. So here, I've got two nitrogens, dinitrogen, three fluorines, trifluoride. It'll always end in ide for every binary compound, two element compound. And then our last one, two elements, nickel and oxygen. Nickel is a metal. Nickel is a B element because it can form more than one type of ion. Again, how do we know that it's nickel 3? The correct way to do this is by checking the charges. Oxide, oxygen, is always going to be minus 2. You're always going to know the negative ion. With three of the oxides, that makes a total of minus 6. Well, that has to be balanced by a positive 6 because all ionic compounds have to have a net ionic charge of zero. Since there's a total of plus six and there's two of the nickels, each one is going to be plus three to equal that plus six. A little shortcut here. Once you see that oxide's minus two and there's two nickels, then that three is going to tell you that the nickel is plus three. But again, you want to try and figure out the charge to make sure that you have a net ionic charge of zero. Now the last part here, correcting wrong formulas. I know it's a little tricky, but you got to know the language. Nitride, nitrate, nitrite. They sound so similar, and they are. But here I have barium nitride. Nitride is nitrogen as a minus three ion. This here is nitrate. So that's why this formula is incorrect. Barium nitride will have three bariums and two nitrogens. This is barium nitrate. The next one, copper one sulfate, well, sulfate is minus two. So I would need two of the coppers to balance out the sulfate. This compound here that was written, this is actually copper two sulfate. And if it had had a 2 there, then that would have been correct. But it doesn't, so it's not. For the calcium oxide, calcium is plus 2. Oh, it's end of school. Calcium is plus 2, oxide's minus 2. So when it's that situation, I just need one of each ion, CaO. I don't drop the 2s. Dinitrogen heptoxide. That is correct. Two nitrogens, seven oxygens. Aluminum hydroxide, we need parentheses. you got to hug the hydroxides. When there's more than one hydroxide, which is a polyatomic ion, we have to have parentheses around it. Otherwise, the O would be excluded from that three. And then the last one, silver nitrate, is correct as written. You don't need parentheses around nitrate. There's just one of them. So that is a correct formula. Hope this helps. Good luck.